Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. It is good to, uh, good to have you here. Thank you for being here in person. And for those of you online, uh, if you're on Facebook, the uh, videos or live feeds that follow this are not directed or endorsed by us. Uh, and also, if uh, for some reason, during the, uh, if you're on Zoom or Facebook and you lose the uh, feed, uh, it's being recorded and you can go to YouTube um, this afternoon and catch the, uh, catch the whole service, just so you know. Uh, this uh, Tuesday, a, a new section, session of Grief Share starts. Uh, COVID, the, the year of COVID has created uh, grief issues unlike uh, our nation has experienced, and so there's a lot of people grieving a lot of things. And uh, Gail's got up to 10 people that uh, have expressed a need uh, to be in this group, and my guess is that there's probably m more. So it starts this week. If you know someone that maybe should consider it or be involved, just have them call the office on Monday, and we'd be glad to give them the uh, information. Uh, on Sundays during the offering, before the, uh, before the offertory music, I'm going to come down and say a, um, a few words by the uh, communion table. I'm going to put my card in. I give online, but there's a card that signifies that I'm, I'm giving. But uh, during that time when I'm down front, if, if you would like to physically kind of present your offering, come forward and do that, um, that would be great. Or if you, if you want to kind of give it that way, but you don't want to come forward, if you hold it up, uh, there'll be someone that can... Uh, Someone that can take it and bring it forward. Uh, the Emmanuel uh, Prayer Ministry, uh, we are uh, currently asking that if you need uh, prayer for something, you can, uh, you can call 304-485-5171, and uh, you'll, you'll, someone will talk to you and then get you to, to talk to someone who, can, who will pray with you. So if that's a need, of, if you're not so much interested in worship, but you could really use someone to pray with you, then uh, you can call you can call that uh, that number. Uh, house to home. Uh, those of you who don't know what house to home is, if you're at a, if you're at a local mission or shelter, you you can be there overnight. But then during the day you have to be out. And house to home is one ministry that provides a place to go, heated, uh, access to a computer, access to um, personal items and toiletry items, access to a shower uh, and bathroom facilities. Uh, vitally needed, and uh, they gave us a list of things that they need. And you'll notice out there we've collected a lot, and we'll take that, we'll take that to them this week. So if that's of interest uh, to you, um, you can grab uh, those items. Uh, also, as you leave today, uh, there's always extra pastries from the bakery. Uh, Bread and Beyond is the bakery that we use while uh, Ruth Wharton's away. It's uh, really good stuff, but the, what we don't use, we put in bags, and as you're leaving, take some of those pastries with you. Uh, our daily bread for uh, March, April, May is in, and if, if you use this, uh, that's uh, available for you to pick up. If you're listening online and you use this daily bread, uh, just call the office and we'll, uh, uh, mail, we'll mail that to you. Be glad to, to, uh, to mail it to you. Uh, the two Bible studies I do, Tuesday 10 a.m. and Wednesday night 6 p.m., both of them are dealing with uh, religions of the world. We've finished uh, Islam and we're moving into Hinduism. It is fascinating to look at what others believe and then compare how it compares to what uh, the Christian faith teaches. So uh, if you want to zoom in to either one of those, or it's in person in the conference room or by Zoom. Uh, baby bottles for the Women's Care Center need to be in, uh, and uh, usher ministry, if that's of interest to you, probably could use one or two more people to, to be involved in that. Any other announcements that, uh, that you know need to be made? Today uh, we're looking at Jesus' uh, beatitude, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And so I uh, just went online, kind of Googled uh, purity courses, and came up with Refiner's Fire. Uh, some people know it really well. That's the first time I'd ever heard of it, and the praise team was willing to learn, to learn it. So as we're thinking about what does it mean to be pure in heart, what does it mean to let God have us so that he cleans out the old and brings uh, the new in? It, it's a refiner. God heats us up so, to remove the impurities. So uh, as you pick up this song and the melody, maybe you can sing along with us. Oh 
me be as gold and precious silver purify my heart let me be as gold pure gold refiner's fire my heart's one desire is to be holy, holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do. from within and make me holy purify my heart cleanse me from my sin deep within refiner's fire my heart's one desire is to be holy, holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. Yes, I'm ready to do your will. Lord, I'm ready to do your will. Good morning. Would you stand with me for the responsive reading? Today we're reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. We're going to continue to declare the praise of the Lord with hymn number 262, Holy, Holy, Holy. Thank you. 
Father, you are indeed holy. You are perfect. You are pure. You are just. You are gracious and loving. And Lord, we are so uh, grateful that your holiness doesn't change, that your holiness is not dependent upon our changing circumstances. Your holiness is not dependent upon the opinion of the world. Your holiness is not dependent upon our own failures or our own successes. Father, your holiness is consistent. Your holiness is forever. And out of your holiness, Lord, you love us. And you lavish your grace upon us. Father, we are thankful. We pray that your holiness will be lifted up this morning, that as we, as we read your word, as we hear your word, as we sing your praises, Father, that, that our hearts would be, would be drawn to your holiness, that we would be consumed by it, that you would make us more and more like Jesus, Father. Uh, again, we dedicate this time to you and to you alone. Only you are worthy. And now, Father, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, turn and greet someone nearby. Make sure her mic's on. Now, this is exciting. I've never actually stood up here before, so... Okay, um, kiddos, will you come up to the first row, please? And before we start, because I will forget, we are going to leave after Elena sings the solo. She's not in here right now, but she will be eventually because she's going to sing a solo. But I wanted to actually tell you guys about something kind of exciting. We, I'm sorry, let me move this. Sorry about that. We are having children's rally. So I wanted to make an announcement about that. This year, we are... Rally? Oh, hey, hey, Jamie. Um, you want to tell us about it? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> Sorry. Springs Children Rally at Parchment Valley on March 6, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. is for kindergarten through sixth graders. This will be an in-person event with a limit of 100 participants. Oh, uh, Jamie. Over? I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. Um. You can't hear me. You can't, I, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Are oh, you sure? yeah. I think I can hear you now. Go ahead. Anyways, current COVID-19 precautions include mask wearing will be followed. If registered before tomorrow, the 22nd, the cost is $13. Hmm? The cost is $25 after that date. There is an online option which, co which costs $20 though the materials won't be made available until some point after the live event. Huh. Let Sarah Stephen know if you are interested. Goodbye, non-fabric people. <laughs> so, Spring Par or Parchment Valley uh, Spring Children's Rally is going to be on March 6th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, if you want to go, who do you need to talk to? Sarah Stevens, okay? Let's pray. God, thank you so much that we are able to enjoy time together here in church. And God, that we're able to have the opportunity to see each other and get to have children's rally. I do pray, God, that even though we have COVID and we have a lot of the things that we're going through, God, that you're faithful and that you're taking care of us, that we're being safe and that you are in control. Um, thank you, God, so much for who you are and how you have protected us. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay right there, guys. In uh, February, we um, have been asking if you have a prayer partner, and it's something that we've done for, for years. Uh, all of you that have contacted me, you've said, hey, I already have a prayer partner, and I've, I've made note of it, and I'll 
I'll keep a list of that. And then some of you have uh, contacted me saying, hey, I would like one. I haven't lost that. I'm just, I'm waiting until, I'm waiting until this Sunday when I get the final numbers. Um, and a lot of you haven't responded to that at all simply because it sounds weird. But uh, if, uh, think about it, uh, it's nice to have, uh, it's nice to have one other person in the church that's committed to contacting you. I think a lot of you don't respond because the idea is that you're somehow going to have to share your heart or you're going to have to expose something personal about you, and you're not prepared to do that. It's just uh, the idea here is simply to have someone coming alongside you through what's been a difficult uh, year, and you simply can share whatever is on your mind. A lot of people do this by text. Uh, the, my prayer partner will text me and say, um, here's what's going on in my life, what's going on in yours, and I'll text back, and then we, we pray for each other. We don't even, we don't even call. Occasionally we call, but... Uh, that's kind of the extent of it. But it's always good to know there's someone else kind of thinking of me and praying specifically. So um, if, you, if that's of interest to you, fill out, that, uh, fill out the form, the insert that's in the, in the bulletin, or let me know or call, and we'll, we'll connect you to, to someone. We can do it all year long, but in February, on, around Valentine's Day, we always try to. And by the way, you commit for one year to make one contact a month. Not a big commitment. Obviously, people typically make more contacts than that, but... Um, every February, you have a chance to say, hey, it's not working, and you can try something else. So it is not, uh, it's not a forever commitment. I'm going to ask John to come forward and just give you a um, kind of an update on the Zoom interest uh, meetings. Well, we've been uh, announcing and inviting folks for a couple of weeks now to, to kind of experiment along with us as we try to, to maintain connections during this time. And so our Zoom interest groups have, have started. Not all of them have had their first meeting yet, um, but uh, Judy's recipe sharing group started yesterday, and um, they had me on as, uh, as IT support, which is a sad state of affairs when I'm the IT guy. Um, but uh, but there, there were six of them on there, and they were super excited just to kind of talk about food, aren't we all? Um, and uh, and uh, they were kind of setting the, uh, the, the plans for their future meetings. Um, so, so their group has gotten off to a good start. Um, I'm sure there's more space available in their group if anyone wants to join and, and talk about recipes. Um, Jane Hulse emailed me yesterday, and she has 11 people signed up for her in Rhonda Johnston's crafting group. I think they have one more spot available. So if you would like to join their group still, uh, and they're going to be sharing different crafting ideas with each meeting. Uh, so that, that one seems to be the, the, the most popular one. Um, I am going to be starting one with one of our students, Nate McPeak. Uh, he and I are going to uh, start next Monday, not tomorrow, but next Monday, um, uh, teaching and facilitating a group around the idea of family game night, uh, around the idea that uh, sometimes can be hard for families to spend time together apart from their screens. And so we're going to use our screens uh, to encourage some, some positive family time. It's not just for families. If you're, uh, if you're single and don't have a family for some reason, um, you're welcome to join us as well and just play some, some fun games with us. And then uh, the fourth group is by Joe Stevens, who is going to be bringing some discussion around the idea of creative writing. He said in the first service, you don't have to be a writer. You don't have to have your own work if you just like listening to other people's poetry or reading other people's writings. It's just, it's just a chance to kind of come together and share creative ideas, um, whether you enjoy creating them or experiencing them. Uh, Joe would be happy to have you in his interest group as well. Um, these are the only four, I think, well, Kurt has another one, so there's, there's five that we have going on right now that are beginning to, to come together. We hope to offer more. So if you have a hobby or an interest that you like to talk about, and you didn't hear me talk about it just now, uh, by all means, please let myself or Judy Prater know that you would be interested in bringing a group together around whatever hobby or interest you have, and we will do everything we can to support it and to get you going. So again, the whole vision is to maintain connections, to maintain our fellowship together as the community and the body of Christ. So. As we uh, prepare for our offering, uh, um, on Sundays I'm just going to come down, and if you want to present your offering in this way, you can uh, come forward and and put it in the, uh, the offering plate or hold it up. And uh, if anybody held it up, John, I was going to have you be the retriever. <laughs> uh, I just thought it'd be a, another way in our service. We don't pass the plate anymore, but uh, the giving of our tithes and offerings is a part of worship, and it's something that 
um, maybe we kind of forget about because we sort of flow through it now because of the pandemic and COVID, but uh, it is an important act of worship to say, God, you've got all of me, uh, my finances included. Uh, before I mention a nice gift, I do want to, oh, those of you that are watching online, thank you. Uh, you can send, uh, obviously send your uh, tithes and offerings in to the church or uh, click on the, go to the website, click on give, and you can give uh, on, online. Uh, before I mention an, uh, a wonderful gift given to the church, I do want to mention that I'm doing a, uh, a Zoom group, and I'm looking for guys that are kind of post-work, uh, sometimes called retired, but I found that that name is not, uh, is not uh, liked. So uh, one guy said, this is my second half. He says, my second half is a chance to do new things and, and have adventures. So uh, I'm finding out some really interesting things. Uh, a lot of these guys aren't into meeting, are not into meetings, but they do have skills and abilities they're willing to share. So I don't know if you know it, but we have a, a chess um, champion in our midst who has won uh, tournaments at a high level, and he loves, uh, he loves chess, and he would like to teach people the basics of it. Uh, so there are some guys that would enjoy that. I think there would also be some students, maybe even some uh, children that are interested in, in that. Um, and some of you know chess and would want to be part of that. So one thing that's going to flow out of that is chess, chess 101. So keep, uh, uh, stay tuned and we'll t tell you more about that. Uh, one other positive thing I want to say related to offering and giving is uh, someone uh, remembered Emmanuel in their uh, in their will, which is a good thing for you to think about. Um, uh, if the Lord has blessed you and Emmanuel has blessed you, consider that. Uh, but the, the money left is, is just enough for us to get a new shuttle van. Um, and we, that the money has been directed, and we are going to get a very, very nice uh, van that you're able to walk into and, you know, the seats on, on either side. And so uh, I've activated the group to go find that, and I know Tuesday Fellowship will be using that. And we'll be using it on Sundays to get people. So it's wonderful that when we're able, we were going to do a, a fundraiser, and we, it was going to take months or years for us to get the money. Now we're now we're out looking for it and finding it, and we're going to we're going to get it. So uh, grateful for that that wonderful gift and and the chance that it, uh, and what it's going to mean for our church. So let us con let's continue to worship as Elena blesses us with her solo.
Father, thank you for your uh, blessings that we see all around us as we, uh, as we live our life more uh, for you. We see you everywhere, and along with you, the need. Uh, the needs are all around us. People are hurting. Um, people are struggling, and uh, we pray that uh, we'll have enough of faith to enter into those situations and that we will uh, pass along the blessing and the resources that you've given to us, to others. We pray it in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, as we uh, come to a time of prayer, a mission moment that you'll hear more about, but I just, uh, w a note was left in my box from the mission team that our, um, the International Ministries is responding to a fire in the Karen refugee camp in Thailand. Um, it's near the Thai-Myanmar border, uh, 40,000 Karen refugees, fire went through the camp, uh, 50 homes destroyed, uh, so they're, they're struggling with no, no homes, no food, and no, and no water, so... As we respond to things like the situation in Texas, which we're um, responding to that as well through the one great hour of sharing, we also, uh, our mission team is asking us to consider maybe taking up an offering to help, uh, to help these, uh, these, uh, re these refugees. Um, see, Thailand is just above Cambodia, and um, the, um, yeah, the, the refugee camp is there. So you'll hear, uh, you'll hear, more. You'll hear more about this next week, and we'll, we'll give you an opportunity if you'd like to give. And then I think we have some, um, some pictures of, uh, I, I think it's a youth, it was a youth challenge. Yeah, this is a, a Sculptures in the Snow. And I think this was supposed to be uh, Mickey, Mickey Mouse, which, uh, okay, nice try. Uh, this, this looks like a crater, <laughs> crater man, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then this uh, looks like someone decided to, to kind of use the ice and, uh, and ornaments and the like to yeah, make something beautiful. Uh, this looks like uh, an alien that uh, landed. Uh, and then the winner would be a uh, rendition of our, our family life pastor, Jonathan Delgado. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that looks, that's really pretty good. Um, better looking than Jonathan, but uh, yeah. Okay, and then... Uh, Pam McLean uh, was reminding us that a year ago, the choir joined with choirs from all over the country and probably the world, and we were in uh, New York City, and we had, uh, there's like seven or, seven or eight of them, you can kind of go through them, um, just flip, flip on through them, uh, but it was a wonderful opportunity for us to go, to be there, we, 
toured New York City, took in, uh, took in Broadway shows. <clears throat> uh, um, part of the group uh, practiced on a regular basis to be ready for the concert, the God and Country concert, uh, with who was the director? Joseph Martin, that we've used his music uh, through the years. He's just an amazing person and so gifted and so talented. So to be able to be uh, directed by him in a concert at Carnegie Hall was truly amazing. And we just had a great time. And that was only a year ago. And we had, um, and then of course, uh, we left New York and New York shut down, literally. As we left, uh, we were the last probably large group that met uh, in, the, in the city, certainly at Carnegie Hall. Um, so we just wanted to remember that we have a choir that was in a, a, a very important event and a, one that was a blessing to them and we just are, it helps us to look forward to what we're going to have when the choir is able to return um, and those decisions will be made as, uh, as, safety, uh, as safety protocols uh, allow. So, and, and then I think we have uh, the last of the mug shots, this is from Pam Morton, my longtime friend gave me this coffee cup for my birthday last year. I think of her every time I have a cup of coffee, and this coffee cup helps me see how important it is to pray a prayer each day for all the blessings the Lord has bestowed upon us, especially as we face trials. It helps us to lean upon him. So uh, again, if, uh, you can still send in your favorite mug if you'd like. Uh, the, new, the new challenge for you is to share a, uh, a scripture or a saying that has been meaningful to you. And Judy Prater was the first to send hers in. And it's um, uh, from Shakespeare in The Merchant of Venice, which I memorized in high school English class. Here is the poetry that she memorized. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven. Upon the place beneath, it is twice blessed. It blesses him that gives and him that takes. Neat. So, very good. Uh, I shared with you in my weekly uh, email that my, um, my grandmother was uh, someone who quoted poetry and scripture continuously and, and, I, and wanted me to memorize it. One that kind of relates to our topic today of uh, purity is uh, one by Alexander Pope that she quoted often, and I've shared it a hundred times to you. Uh, Vice is a monster of such frightful mien. Uh, sin is ugly when you see it. Vice is a monster of such frightful mien as to be hated needs but be seen. But seen too oft, familiar with his face, we first endure, then pity, then embrace. Sin is ugly when you first see it and you are repulsed by it, but before you know it, you, become, you begin to tolerate it, and then you finally embrace it. Could there be a better poem that really describes what's happened to us as people? and as a country, things that we wouldn't tolerate years ago. Now our um, images and things that we would never have allowed, uh, we tolerate it and now we, now we embrace it. Um, so it's a good, good reminder. Uh, Bob Byers is with us again, Bonnie Nestor, good to have, uh, good to have you uh, here with us. Uh, Lauren Modisette had a beautiful solo last Sunday and this Sunday Elena did such a good job. Marriage Course continues to be a blessing. Um, Keith Mayer and Ken Barton have, are doing a Bible study at a local drug rehab center that has been a blessing. Meredith McLean um, is now duly employed at Metro Music in, in Atlanta. We praise God for that. Uh, there's a praise here. Jason George, he got a good cancer uh, result, Jennifer Beaver's brother, and then right after that got a, a bad one. He has uh, stage three bladder cancer and is asking us to, to please pray everyone to please pray for him. So that's uh, Jennifer Beaver's brother, Jason uh, George. Obviously the residents of Texas, um, Alan, Will Cosby's brother, and Rick Ashwell, We're just continuing to pray for uh, Rick's making some progress, some real progress in, in, in seeing people, moving, speaking, and, uh, and swallowing. Okay, M major, uh, so we're just thankful for every little step uh, of improvement. Uh, Maria Delgado was diagnosed with, diagnosed with low-grade um, glioma, and uh, I don't know exactly what that is, but it is something specific, and now uh, they'll be going back to uh, see the doctor in March and then an MRI in August. Really need to see if it's shifting or moving is the big, the big issue now. So keep Maria and John in your prayers. Lee Emmerich is listed uh, as very ill, but he died, he died this morning. Um, um, 
forgot her name, Connie, uh, uh, sent me a text. And uh, Ro I'm sorry, Robbie. Robbie. Robbie Leonard uh, is a friend and sent me the text. Uh, keep uh, Ken Gilbert at Belpre Landing and Joe Hayes at Cedar Grove. Uh, Lisa Hall, diagnosed with cancer and um, begin, probably will begin chemo and still grieving the loss of her father. Uh, Mike Hayden, blood, uh, blood infection that's taken its toll on a, on a valve in his heart. They're going to have to go, go in and replace that along with other things he's dealing with. So there's a lot going on there for he and Cheryl. Uh, Blaine Hess will have some uh, procedure related to kidney stone in the near future. Um, and then Tammy, uh, Tammy Reynolds Kelly, uh, she is, uh, continues, uh, she was so weak at the end of the week that she couldn't get up and use her walker, so that's not a, that's not a good sign. She's asking us to pray for strength so that she can get up and move. She is slated to be moved from uh, Ohio to West Virginia this week. She'll be at Encompass Health South, and um, Tammy's just saying, I need a miracle. I got to move. I got to be active so I can do the chemo, and, um, uh, she doesn't feel good, and you all know how that is. You're supposed to move, but you just got nothing, and that's kind of where she is. So she's asking us to pray for a miracle. Any other, uh, any other updates or corrections, additions? Okay, I found one other uh, song on purity. This one goes back to Promise Keeper days, and um, it's called Purify, Purify My Heart. We'll sing it through twice. If you get it the first time, join us the second. Touch me with your cleansing fire. Take me to the cross. Your holiness is my desire. Breathe your life in me. Kindle a love that flows from your throne. Oh, purify my heart, purify my heart, purify my heart, touch me with your cleansing fire, take me to the cross, your holiness is my flows from your throne. Oh, purify my heart. Purify my heart. Father, uh, this whole service, we've been reflecting upon your holiness and the fact that you are indeed holy and that you dwell in what the Bible calls unapproachable light. Uh, and yet we are mindful of the fact that although you are holy, you have come to us. Father, a big difference between Islam and Christianity is that they believe that Allah remains transcendent and high and mighty and in many ways mysterious and unknowable. But you, you, cho you chose to come and be born of a woman and to live a life here. Uh, the one who created the world, became the light that dwelt among us. Uh, and you are the light of the world, and those who know you will never walk in darkness. And you have said to us that we are the light of the world. And as we serve and as we share, we shine a light and we direct people back to your glory. So we, we would ask today, Father, that anything that is in us that um, is unclean, that is impure, um, clouds our vision and it keeps us from seeing you and knowing you and worshiping you. So we would ask that in this brief time that we have to reflect upon Jesus' words, that we might reflect about our own lives and, and, and get a sense of whether or not we are pure in heart so that we can see you. Be with all those that we've mentioned. Each one is going through a crisis which has turned their world upside down or they're dealing with the fear and uncertainty of procedures and scans and all the things that go with not knowing. 
We pray that we'd come alongside each one, that we would show love, care, and concern, and that we would um, support each other. Thank you for those that have gathered in person here in the sanctuary, and thank you for those that have taken the time to come on and listen to us via Zoom or Facebook or later through YouTube. We pray that something of this service is a blessing, and so we offer it all and ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So there's an old preacher who um, was concerned about his, what his son was going to do with his life, and so he decided to create a little test. And he went into his son's room, and he, uh, on his desk, he placed a, a Bible. Next to the Bible, he placed a $20 bill. Next to the $20 bill, he placed a whiskey bottle. And next to the whiskey bottle, he placed a Playboy magazine. And he said to himself, if he picks up the Bible, he's probably going to be a preacher uh, like me. If he picks up the $20 bill, he's most likely going to be a businessman or a banker. And he said, that's okay. If he picks up the bottle, he's probably going to be someone who drinks and parties a lot. And if he picks up the Playboy, he's probably going to become one. Then the old preacher waited for his son to come home, and he hid behind the door as the son entered the room. The boy walked over, looked at his desk, put the Bible under his arm, took the $20 bill and put it in his pocket, opened up the whiskey bottle, poured himself a drink, and then casually opened the magazine to take a look. The old pastor was disgusted and muttered to himself, Lord, have mercy, he's going to run for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I know. I found that last night, and I had to. I had to share it. Uh, it's really kind of true, though, because every day things are placed before us, and we have to decide. There's the Bible. There's money. <laughs> there's alcohol, drugs, and other things that through which we can kind of escape life. And then there are sexual temptations that are everywhere in this culture. This, they've always been there, but in in this culture. You're a click away from the most wonderful things that you can find on the internet and also the most degrading. And uh, that is the world that we, that we live in. And uh, all of them affect our heart, either for good or for ill. And that's why Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Your heart's pure, you see God. Your heart's not pure. It clouds and blinds, so you can't see the way that you would like to. Um, David Wilkerson, in his uh, series on the Beatitudes, uh, did the Beatitudes leading up to this by describing a heart, Uh, and uh, I want to show you the Beatitude hearts, Uh, and number one is the desperate heart, those who are poor in spirit and say, I need God, I have to have God, That's, uh, that's the center of my life. Broken hearts are those who mourn for both their sin and the sin of others. A surrendered heart in meekness surrender to God and say, you're the potter, I'm the clay. Uh, hungry hearts say, God, I want, to, I want to know you. I hunger and thirst to know you and all of you. Last week, we looked at tender hearts who in mercy seek to help others. And today, we look at the undivided heart, those who are focused uh, upon, uh, completely upon God. We hear this phrase, and I grew up with it, you need to accept Jesus into your heart. We, we need to accept Jesus into uh, our heart. I think there's a slide to that effect. Is there? Uh, there yeah, we go. We, we received Jesus into our heart. And I remember I, I read about a child who uh, was told, you need to invite Jesus into your heart. And he literally looked at his chest and said, how's he going to get in here? How, how's he actually, he's thinking of it literally. How's, how's Jesus going to get inside me? And then a mom was telling her young daughter, you need to invite Jesus into your heart. And the daughter, uh, in the story I read, bent over with her ear to her mom's chest. And she said, I think I can hear him inside you. And he's making coffee. <laughs> I think I can hear him. We invite Jesus into our heart because the heart is the, is the center of, of everything about us. Uh, the, in the Bible, it says man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. We're told to, in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Ecclesiastes 3 says God has placed eternity in the human heart. Jeremiah says you will seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with your whole heart. And Romans 10 says, for it is with your heart that you believe 
and are justified. So our heart is more than just our emotions, our choices, our mind. It's a place where all of these come together, and it is the control center. So the Bible says, guard your heart, for it is the center. It does everything. It allows you to be who you are. Uh, and then I think of purity. Uh, we are, uh, blessed are the pure in, in heart. Uh, and there's a slide uh, to, on, the, on purity there that you can bring up. Purity means uh, to be free from, in, the word literally means to be free from impurity. So the idea is of uh, gold or silver that is heated up and then you take the impurities, the dross, and you, it's purified as the impurities are taken away. The word also has this idea of being focused uh, and undistracted. Uh, instead of having compartments where you have your family here and your church here and your work here and your personal life here, a pure person is kind of all integrated. God is in every room. Uh, there's not compar you don't compartmentalize your life. You are your life, and God is in the center of it, and you're focused on him. And then there's a sense in which that pure relates to holy, and holy means one who is set apart from from the, not set apart in the sense of being better than, but set apart in the sense that um, we're, I'm not going to engage in, in, in things or look at things that will, um, uh, that will dishonor, uh, dishonor God or, or corrupt uh, me. So Jesus, uh, Jesus blessed the pure, but purity is not popular today. If you say that someone is as pure as a driven snow, it means that they're naive, clueless, or out of touch. Uh, people who strive for purity are often considered uptight, negative, narrow-minded, afraid to have fun, and simply out of touch. If, you're, if you desire purity, then you're just uh, you're out of it. Um, but then look at someone who doesn't care about any of these things and how they live and, what, and the things that they do and, and what comes back to them. Um, God is holy. And it says in Scripture that because God is holy, we are to seek holiness as well. And Romans 12 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so when Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God, what he means is, Blessed is a person with undiluted devotion, who is completely committed to staying focused only on God. That person will not be blinded by the sin of the world, but will be constantly and will continuously see God in all of his glory. That's what Jesus is trying to say. So just a few random thoughts on purity here that came to me. Uh, as we seek to be pure in this world where there's so much impurity, number one thought is simply that purity is progressive, meaning that if we're going to be pure, it's got to be something that's proactive. You can't be passive about purity. You can't like, okay, I'm just going to go out in the world, and whatever comes, at me, uh, whatever comes to me comes to me, and I, I don't have to do anything. There's a battle going on, but I'm not even going to try to fight it because I'm just going to let it come. Well, the, the, uh, the example that I think is every day most of you take a bath, okay? Uh, if you, I was joking in the first service that if I decided I wasn't going to bathe anymore, uh, my guess is the first the staff would have an issue with it, uh, and then the deacons would probably take me aside and say, um, you know, when we hired you, we kind of assumed that you'd, you'd deal with a certain level of hygiene. Um, we, you take for granted that you're going to bathe your external body and, and cleanse some of the impurities from your, your body on a regular basis. We understand that, and when you don't, it's easy to uh, kind of know that it hasn't happened. But that's the same thing on the inside. We, we need to be cleansed on the inside as well, and that means calling out to God and confessing things when they're not right, and maybe having someone that, that will help us. A lot of people think, hey, I, I, I've been purified. I came forward in a church. I received Christ. Uh, I got baptized. I've, I've, been, I've been made pure. And what, they, what they've done is they've confused justification with sanctification. We, we come forward, we receive Christ, we get baptized, and we are justified by faith, and we're forgiven and made right with God. But then the Spirit comes in, and the Spirit wants to continue this work. It's called sanctification, where every day we call for the Spirit to come in and, and move in us. And we want to think God's thoughts. And we want to think on things that are pure and lovely and true and right and admirable. I want my thoughts to be, the, God, your thoughts. And it's a daily kind of a process. So it's a daily moment-by-moment -moment struggle to say, God, 
please, uh, please wash me. The image I got that came to me this week because it's snowy and uh, as the snow melts and if you're out driving as the snow is melted and there's salt on the road and you're behind a car that's throwing up salt spray, how, <laughs> how long can you drive before you have to put on your windshield wiper? Okay, you, uh, when, this, when this snow begins to melt and all the ice that they put on it and someone is in front of you and they're throwing up that salt spray, you have to have windshield wiper fluid. I've had to pull over and walk somewhere to get the fluid because your windshield is, becomes totally covered over and you can't see. That's how important it is. And so you can't keep driving when, when your windshield wiper is, com your windshield is completely covered. And yet some of us do. We never, we never do that process where we turn on the spirit to let him, to let him cleanse us. Uh, baptism is, the, is, the, is kind of the ritual here that relates to this. A person in baptism goes under the water and there's a sense that I want to die to the old and I'm leaving the sin and the impurities in the water and I'm rising up then in resurrection power. That symbolism of dying to self and rising in new life. And so we, we have baptism as a symbolic aspect of our worship that relates to that uh, purity. Martin Luther, the reformer, is said to have begun every day by saying, I am baptized. And by that he was saying, God, I know that I have, you have cleansed me and I want, I want to continue to be pure. So purity is progressive. Secondly, purity is uh, perceptive. And by perceptive, I mean uh, the, the, the pure heart can truly see how dirty their lives are. Uh, one of the evidences that we possess a pure heart is that we begin to see and feel the sin that's in us and we mourn because it's bad. Purity allows us to see God and by contrast ourselves more clearly. Um, the image I'd give you here is if, uh, imagine you're living in a uh, dark house. The uh, light bulbs are out, you've got thick drapes over the windows, and you're living there from day to day. And as you live in this dark house, you don't really know if the trash has gotten into the trash can. You don't know if there's a spill on the carpet. You don't know if the, if the crack on the wall or the foundation has gotten bigger. And so you're kind of living there, but you really can't see the effects of your living. And then God comes in and he puts light bulbs in. And he throws back the thick drapes. And the light, the, the bright light, sunlight shines through the windows. And what is your first thought when that sunlight hits that, the house, that space you've been living in? Your first thought is going to be, this place is a mess. And I didn't see it. My eyes are open. The lights come on. And I can see I've been living in a pigsty. I could kind of smell it, but I couldn't see it. But now that I can see it, I want, to begin to, I want to begin to do something about it. John 3 says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness. It's interesting. People love darkness and refuse to come into the light. Uh, well, that's true. That's true of me sometimes. I know what's right, and I know what I should do. I know what the light is, and yet there is a sinful part of me that would choose to live in darkness simply because it's easier, and it's familiar, and it's what I know. I know it's not right, but I, I, I have a conscience still, but I, I choose to live in darkness, and then the Spirit begins to work on me and begins to massage my heart. And so purity is coming into the light. Paul says, now we live, now we see as through a glass darkly, but one day we're going to break through and we're going to see God face to face. Now we know in part, but one, one day we're going to know fully just as we've been fully known. So purity is progressive. You take a bath every day. Purity is progressive. You open up the drapes and you let the light into the living room. And then thirdly, purity means we can stop pretending. We don't have to pretend that we're something that we're not. Uh, pure in heart means sincere, no deceit, no mixed motives. It's like Jesus said, blessed are the, you must become like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that idea is a child uh, in its best form is someone who is innocent and they simply are who they are. That's what makes a child so refreshing. So purity means we don't have to pretend. There was a guy who um, needed a job and he saw where the zoo had, a, uh, had an ad for someone that, uh, they, that they wanted to employ. He gets there and the, and, the, and the zookeeper says, this is kind of a unique thing so we didn't really put it out in the, in the public ad, but our gorilla has died and um, we need someone to fill that exhibit until we get another one. It's like the most popular exhibit and you know, kind of keeps our zoo open. 
So are you willing to wear, wear the gorilla suit and kind of go along with this until we get a, a real one? And it paid really good money. And so the guy's like, okay, I'm all in. And uh, he, really, he really got into it. Uh, the, the crowds would throw peanuts, and he would jump around and jump back and forth. And the more he moved, the more people loved it. Finally, he saw there was a vine. He starts swinging. He starts swinging back and forth, and uh, he wasn't real good at that. So he swings out wide, and he lets go of the vine and lands in the lion's den. And this uh, hungry lion is coming right at him, and the guy throws up his arms and says, I'm a guy in a gorilla suit, don't eat me. And the, the lion comes up and tackles him and says, listen, if you don't shut up, we're both going to lose our jobs. Okay. All right. <laughs> Purity means we can stop uh, pretending. What, uh, what are you acting like on the outside that covers something that is different on the inside? Every single one of us do that. Uh, in Jesus' day, it was the Pharisees. The Pharisees went around complaining that Jesus' disciples didn't wash their hands. And they went, they went to Jesus and says, hey, your, your, um, your disciples don't wash your hands. And if you want to be pure, you wash your hands, not just before the meal, but during the meal. They had these elaborate rituals where you'd wash your hands a hundred times a day, all of it in a, very, in a very formal way where the water would flow down and you'd show everybody, hey, I'm clean. And they, they, the Pharisees looked at Jesus and said, your disciples don't wash your hands. And Jesus says, you know, it's not about washing your hands. It's about your heart. And, what he, and he went on to say, what goes into your mouth ultimately goes out. But the things that come out of a person's mouth, uh, those are what defile him. For out of the heart, Jesus said, come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony and slander, these are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands, that doesn't, that doesn't defile someone. The idea here is if you and I could see our heart up on a screen, like an echocardiogram, what we're going to see is, I would love to tell you that if my heart were up on a screen, you would see this pure, godly, spiritual heart, but you know what you're going to see? You're going to see a heart that's confused. <laughs> you're going to see a heart that struggles. You're going to see a heart that uh, makes some bad decisions, and it clouds my thinking. It would all be up there. I, you know, the, the world kind of tells you, follow your heart. Your heart is good. Uh, your heart is clean. Biblically, people, uh, we are born sinners, and we are sinners as we go through this life, but there is a process by which, by the Spirit, God begins to make us clean. But it's a process, and it happens day by day. Day. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you want to know what's in someone's heart, what do they talk about? If you want to know what's in someone's heart, what do they do? How do they spend their time? How do they spend their money? That's, that shows you what your, where your heart is very, very clearly. Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, didn't we prophesy? Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we perform miracles? And it's in one of the most uh, scary verses in the Bible, Jesus will say to these people who apparently were very religious, he'll say, depart from me, I don't know you. So in other words, you can look spiritual, you can read your Bible, you can pray, you can come to church, but your heart is far away. And people, that is what I, that's what Jesus is saying. Blessed are the pure in heart who are connected to God. Those people are going to see God. And then purity requires new priorities. Purity requires new priorities. What do you look at? Uh, how, do you, how do you spend your time? It's, it involves daily decisions that you make. Uh, before the pandemic, we were spending about eight hours a day in front of a television, a computer, and our cell. That's gone up now. We're up to nine, ten hours a day that we're in front of a, we're in front of a computer. That could, we can be exposing ourselves to some good things, but also I know we can be exposing ourselves to bad things, and it can really clutter can clutter our minds. This week I happened across a TV show, some of you may watch it, called Hoarders. Any of you ever watch Hoarders? Oh, it's a sad, it is a sad show. And it's six feet high of trash and debris and food boxes that have not been thrown out. And it literally cascades down in kind of an avalanche toward a path. And this lady is talking to, uh, talking to her son. They finally got her son involved. And she said, I live here. This is my life. This is my house. And the son's saying, Mom, you got to get out of here. It's, it's like it's falling in, and they've condemned it. And, if, if, Mom, if you, don't, if, if, if you don't leave with me, then they're just going to bulldoze the whole house. And they, and they pulled her out, kicking and screaming, out of this house that, that you, none of you would, even, would be able to stay in for two minutes. 
And yet something about, the, something about that place had become where she wanted to be. And she had not, in a regular manner, thrown things out. And so it all piled, all piled up. You have to set priorities. I read about a mom who took her sixth grade son to a pastor. And the son had, um, sixth, sixth grade, he had gone to church. Um, he had expressed his love for Christ. He had been baptized, went to the youth group, uh, went to all the activities. But he's coming, he's coming to his mom, and he's saying, Mom, uh, I think I'm going to hell. And the mom's like, okay, uh, we're, I, where's, this, where's this coming from? And he kept saying, Mom, I think I'm going to hell. Um, well, she finally was able to get, go a little deeper with him. And the sixth grade boy got exposed to pornography by another friend with an iPad at a party. And uh, he knew enough about the iPad to go to sites. Uh, and he had been on hardcore um, sites for the last six months and had seen things. It, 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 it was something that uh, intrigued him, yet repulsed him and confused him. Sixth grade boy being exposed to things that you or I or anyone else would know, this is just not right. And finally he realized there's something demonic about this and anybody that's looking at this must be going to hell. And so she took the she took the boy to the pastor, and the pastor was able to say, first of all, you are not alone because a lot of people are struggling with this, just like you are. They're older and younger, but uh, you, you're not alone. And number two, you can begin right now to simply confess it and say, God, I, I've seen this, but I want you to cleanse me. And you right now can begin to confess it. And he prayed, he prayed with the boy and said, you, you, and you need to be uh, accountable to your, to your parents so that they have some idea of, of what you're in, involved with. So this is something where as parents we have to begin to take more, we have to be more aware of what uh, our kids are able to, to get involved with and set some standards. Uh, put the, put, if you have a central computer, put it out in a, out in a room and there are some controls you can put on cell phones and, and iPads, but uh, you have to begin to set some, set some priorities and that means being willing to throw some things out or stop doing some things that you know simply are not good or not right. Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin, you should pluck it out, gouge it out, and throw it away. It's better to enter heaven minus an eye than to go into hell with your whole body. Is that not an amazing? If your eye causes you to gouge it out and throw it away, better to enter heaven minus your eye than to go to hell with your whole body. And he's saying, listen, if, if you're looking at something that you know in your heart and in your spirit is not good and right and true and lovely, then, then remove it. And I, honestly, it, because we're so drawn to these things, you probably aren't going to be able to do this on your own. You're going to have to have somebody that you're accountable to. And that's why we never deal with this, because we don't talk about the impure things that we look at to other people. We're ashamed of it, so we don't talk about it, and it just continues on. And that brings us to the next point, is that purity is a partnership, and that just simply means that we can't do purity alone. You can't do it in isolation. You're going to have to have, uh, go, to the, uh, the, go to the next one. Purity uh, is a partnership. I think that there's a, well, there you go. Oh, well, uh, that's one beyond that. That's fine. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus was saying in, uh, in John uh, 11, he, he, calls, uh, he calls Lazarus out from the tomb, and it's interesting, Lazarus comes out, and I've, I've shared this before, but Jesus could, have called, uh, Jesus could have called Lazarus out in any way he wanted, but Lazarus came out with the grave clothes uh, around him, and Jesus looked at Lazarus and said to the people around, you unbind him and set him free. And so we, all of us, in a sense, are, so we, we have these grave clothes around us, and we can't pull them off ourselves. And so Jesus says, you, you need other people to begin to help you with this process. Uh, and I'm hoping that we can develop relationships and prayer partners where you would have a person with whom you could just say, you know, I know I'm involved in some things that in my conscience and my heart I know are not right, but uh, maybe, maybe you could help me. There's a partnership. Um, this week I read about a, uh, uh, a leader, Christian leader that I've followed and read his books and looked up to for years. He has affected my ministry and my thinking. And this year it came out that uh, he was a serial abuser of women. 
um, in, in, the, in the worst way. And I'm just, I'm just devastated. I mean, I, I, I'll, still, I'll still read his books because you think the things he said were true, but it came out in the, when, they finally did the, when they finally hired the firm to look into his life, it came out that he refused to let other people uh, be, he, he refused to be accountable to other people. He never gave up his phone. He said, I'm the leader of this. I'm spiritual. I'm the one that runs this organization. And so no questions about what I'm doing. Well, he was doing horrible things. And he was able to cover it all over because he was a spiritual person who spoke all around the world. And if I spoke his name, you would know it. And I'm just devastated, but I'm also, I'm also recommitted in my life to be accountable so that I maintain some purity and some integrity for whatever time that the Lord has for me uh, in, in ministry. Because if this guy goes down in flames, I'm thinking, man, I can, it, can, it can happen to anybody. You've got to, you've, got to be, you've got to have other people around you. And then purity is found by inviting in the presence of God. It requires a partnership. And the idea here is simply you can spend your life trying to avoid sin or you can spend your time walking with Jesus. The Pharisee said, here are the rules. Do this, 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 and this. Wash your hands, and you're clean. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, walk with me. And he walks with me, <laughs> and he talks with me, and he tells me I have his own. And the joy that we share as we tarry there, none other has never known. The Pharisees say, follow the rules, and you'll be clean. Jesus says, follow me, and we'll learn together and you'll come to you'll come to love me if you want to be faithful to your wife you know the best thing you can do is just fall more in love with your wife find times to be together find times where you develop that relationship and then suddenly the other temptations won't be as strong the the temptations to adultery come when your core relationship is strained and then suddenly you're very open to other options and so all the temptations that we deal with are made stronger when we're not connected to God when we don't love him we don't worship together. And so people, you don't realize it, but what we're doing right now, gathering in worship online and, in, and together, we are singing praises, we are praying together, we're worshiping together, we're focusing on God and on Scripture, and our hearts are being remade together so that we can be stronger, so that we can find purity. What would your life be like if you didn't have a church family and a place to worship and a place to be, to be focused on God. We, we need this, and it's so, so important. Um, spoiler alert, uh, I want to close with uh, a, uh, a reference from uh, a movie called The Shawshank Redemption. It's a 94 uh, movie with some graphic uh, scenes, so I cannot fully recommend it, but uh, it stars uh, Tim Robbins, who is a banker that's been imprisoned. He uh, claims he's falsely, been falsely accused for killing his wife. Robbins uh, befriends another prisoner uh, played by Morgan Freeman, and together they cope with the brutalities of pr prison life. Um, yeah, uh, take that off. I'll, I'll get to that. will be my final slide. Just give, give me a logo slide right now. There you go. Uh, and Robbins learns of uh, the money laundering uh, that's going on by the prison warden, and he finally escapes uh, with, the, with evidence of the crime by crawling through 500 yards of prison sewer pipe that went out under the wall into a stream. And there's a picture of him crawling through the sewer, and Morgan Freeman is talking over the whole thing, that he crawled through unimaginable uh, sewage as he goes. And as he gets to the end of the pipe, he falls into a, a stream, and he goes under the water, and then he comes back up. And for uh, a while there, the camera follows him as he's running through the stream, having been in the sewer pipe for 500 yards, he's running. And then as he runs, he pulls off his shirt, and his top is, his, his, the, his uh, bare chest is, 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 uh, is there, and, and he, the camera pans right up on top of him, and his arms go to the sky, and the rain is pouring down just across his head, and and. and uh, cleansing more of the sewer stuff that was on him, and he begins to weep, and he begins to cry. Uh, he is um, he's clean, and more importantly, he's free. And I, I watched that image last night again on, uh, on YouTube, and I, 
I said, to, I said to myself, that's it. In this culture, we are literally crawling through a sewer pipe. If you want to get free, you're just kind of going through the sewer pipe, and everywhere you look, there's something that's really not good and, 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 and not helpful and not pure. It's everywhere, and we're crawling through it. And the only hope is literally to throw your hands to the heavens and say, God, I can't do this, but you, you can cleanse me. By your spirit, as, as you rain down your spirit upon me, you can cleanse me from within. I can't do it on my own. So God, you're going to have to cleanse me so that I can see you. So here's my Lenten challenge, that final, that final slide. As we go through the 40 days of Lent, I want you to reflect on Philippians uh, 4, 8. Uh, read this with me. Finally, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there's anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's the key, people, is for us to say focus on what's true and noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable. This has been a year, and I've, uh, I've stayed connected enough with the news to be totally worn out. Um, and the kinds of things that our leaders have done and said are so deadening and so hurtful uh, all across the board. And I, I just, I've come through it. It's like people, I feel like we've been crawling through a sewer, uh, not just with politics, but with, uh, with everything else that's out there. And uh, I realize, you know, the only hope, the only hope for purity is for us to dive into the waters of spirit and say, God, you're going to have to wash me anew. I can't do it, but you can. And we need to throw our hands to the heavens and say, God, please make me, make me new, make me pure so that I can see you, so I can worship you. Let's, let's pray. Father God, uh, with so much out there, and there's so much we can look at, um, we know in our spirit when things aren't right, and yet uh, there's an addiction that causes us to go back to those places again and again and again, and every time we feel worse, Father, there's a better way, and we would just ask that uh, you would begin this process of making us new, purifying our hearts so that we would begin to desire you and only you. And when we look only to you, we begin to see you everywhere. Uh, we see you in creation. We see you in the needs of others. We begin to see you everywhere, not just in spiritual times, but in regular times. Continue to move in our hearts, in our lives, and in our churches. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I chose the final hymn because it really flows out this idea, uh, Be Thou My Vision. And I, I'd like for us to sing the three verses together. Uh, if you'd like to respond uh, today, there's a couple of ways to do that. One, uh, there's, a, there's a phone number. Uh, and if you would like someone to pray with you, uh, call that number, 304-485-5171. You're also, if you'd like to come forward just simply for prayer, you're welcome to come forward here in the, uh, in the sanctuary, and we'll pray for you here. So let's, uh, let's stand and let this song be our prayer. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou art.
receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.